I want you to think for 10 seconds of any disabled person you know, have interacted or have read about on social media or news. I think it will be reasonable to assume that many among you would not recollect any interaction. Few would have interacted with them at public places. Some of you would be lucky enough to have them as your friends and family members or colleagues. But most of you would have seen a viral video of a successful disabled person doing something extraordinary or achieving something. Have you ever thought why do stories and videos of a successful disabled person go viral? The simplistic answer to this question would be, well, because they are motivational and inspirational. Generally, people tend to stop thinking on this matter at this answer. But to get a holistic perspective on any matter, I adapt a simple solution of asking why five to six times to the answers of any question until I get to its crux. Because the first answer seldom helps us in getting the wholesome understanding of the question. So let's ask why again to the answer of this question. Why do you feel motivated when you see a disabled person achieve something? The obvious answer to our second why would be that one will feel motivated to see a disabled person achieve something because he is doing it against all the odds. And if he or she can, then why can't I? I have experienced a thing or two about people seeking motivation from my mediocre achievements. I occupied half a page in the local newspaper for writing the exams of 10th boards by myself. That was the first time I realized that how a simple task performed by me gets blown out of the proportion in the media. Media frenzy was intensified when I secured third rank in CA Foundation in Surat. There were... <laughs> there were headlines like Kaun kehta hai kismat haatho ki lakiro mein hoti hai? Kismat to unki bhi hoti hai jinke haath nahi hoti hai. While you were applauding me, I was thinking about those two people who were ahead in that rank than me and got very little applause and very limited media coverage. So this brings us to our third and fourth why. Why do mediocre achievements like mine inspire people and make for a story worth publishing? And why are the odds of success always against the disabled people? The blunt answer to this is that we live in a society where the norm is to see a disabled person not performing or making it big. So when we see an achievement by a disabled, there is an element of shock and awe attached to it. It somehow becomes abnormal and worthy of press coverage. But would you experience the same shock if majority of disabled people start achieving? Or if a normal person achieves something similar? I am sure you wouldn't bat an eye on a normal person writing his board exams by himself, right? But suddenly a disabled person is doing it. So let's sprinkle the elements of motivation and inspiration and a newspaper clip is good to go. My point here is not to discourage publicity of successful disabled people. But the point is to not showpiece it as a showpiece of inclusiveness. Rather, don't you think it will set a better narrative if we start using these instances to draw upon a larger point? A point that every disabled could write similar success stories if given an inclusive environment. So as a society, we should question ourselves that why are success stories of disabled people such a rarity? Why do we not often find them at our workplaces, schools, tuitions or seldom see them shopping alongside us in malls? What are we doing wrong? Or rather, what should we do right to increase this inclusiveness? So after bombarding with you with lots of whys, let's change the question to how. 
how do we create an environment that will help a disabled individual flourish? I hope to relate the answer to this question with my life story. My story started akin to any other child of your neighborhood, but this story took an acute turn on a fine November evening in 2005 when I was just 12 years old. We were playing cricket in our building compound and a ball rolled beside transformer and I went near it to retrieve that ball. The current was leaking at the same time from that high tension wire and accidentally my hand got stuck to it and I got electrocuted. Chances of my survival were slim but fate had different plans for me as power in the building dripped at the same time thereby pushing me back and saving me from the jaws of certain death. I woke up after a brief period of coma in the hospital to the sight of my parents. After multiple discussions with doctors, it was decided that I had to ampute both of my hands in order to stop the gangrene from spreading further. After few months of discharge, a doctor suggested us to buy prosthetic hands. And thus began my journey of relearning crucial tasks like writing and eating again. It was like childhood all over again. I seldom try to reflect on my thoughts during that difficult period. The blessing in disguise to have this accident at such a young age is that you often don't think long term during that period. But if you are at an older age, it is a lot more difficult to cope up with reality because you are used to a certain kind of lifestyle. Since I was at a very young age, I had very limited responsibilities because of the financial stability my family offered. And hence, I started focusing on short-term objectives. Do you know what is the most important step in your life? It's always the next step. And so, step by step, I adopted a dual approach of using my prosthetic hands for tasks like writing and eating and using this term part of my hand to operate mobile phone, computers and doing basic tasks like drinking water. For a second, let's imagine we are 600 years into the past. So every one of you wearing high number spectacles would be considered as disabled as per the standards of that society. But since now we have this amazing and affordable invention of spectacles, society considers you normal. So a person is only as disabled as the society around them has failed to cope up with. A human being is nothing but a product of his surrounding environment. And I have met people at every stages of my life who have not only supported me, but also encouraged me. It started with my family, where my parents played the role of an anchor to guide my ship through the turbulent waters ahead. Technically, they have now raised me twice. My sisters took care of me at initial stages. But once they saw me overcoming my challenges, we reignited the old rivalry of snatching the TV remote and competing for that perfect sofa. While you need, while your family plays the role of an engine in your life's car, you need good friends to play role of a sturdy tires for a smooth and safe ride. And there my school and building friends came to the rescue, thanks to sports. I would not lie by saying that no doors will be closed when you encounter disability. Of course, I could not play cricket any longer. But when cricket made its exit, football made its entry. Football became my passion both in terms of watching and playing. And there were also times when cricket was played and I started getting involved in it first as an empire. But after a few days, we collectively invented leg cricket 
where my friends used to do underarm bowling and I used to bat with my leg. And of course, there was no LBW. For me, that is the true spirit of inclusiveness. Society should not change its activities in order to make a disabled person feel inclusive. Society should change itself in a way to include that disabled person in that activity. There is also one another unique benefit that we disabled people have. At any place we go, we usually attract people who are extra considerate to our needs. And in process of getting help over an extended period, we develop strong bonds with them. I have observed this at every phase of my life and I am still connected to most of my friends from those phases because of the strong bond that was shared. The formula was of unconditional support when required and tough opponents when competing or playing. Please don't make us feel special, just make us feel normal. So talking about right environment, a lot of popular curiosity among people about disability is about their love life. So I know you all must be thinking that yes, Right parents, right friends, but difficult to imagine a disabled person romancing around, right? Well, I have a surprise for you. Since my childhood, I had a crush on a girl whom I am now proud to call my wife. Nidhi has accepted me for all my flaws and all my strengths and together we have climbed mountains literally and figuratively. The onus of creating an environment for a disabled person to survive is on the society. And then to nurture belief in that disabled person to not just survive but thrive. And key piece in solving this puzzle is with education. Education is the only lifeline since most of the mobility dependent and blue collar jobs are out of the question. After my accident, I decided to enroll with my same school instead of getting into a special needs school. I think this played a bigger part in building my confidence to counter the society and compete in the society as equals. Limitation in infrastructure should not be a reason to not accommodate a disabled person in normal school. I am fortunate because my school decided to enroll me and teachers played a very crucial part in ensuring my comfort. We need more schools like this who have an approach of inclusion towards disability. Because this stigma of a disabled person having a sad or unproductive life can change if more and more students start seeing us as their equals and as their friends. So after completing my CA, I had set my sights to pursue an MBA from one of the top B schools. And my dream became true when I am Ahmedabad came knocking. Something that every disabled person should know that it is relatively less difficult for us to enroll in top B schools or top engineering colleges or any of top government schools of this country because of reservation quota. You have to make the most out of the chips handed over to you. But it is also important to note that at the same time, once we are in, we have to compete with normal students and in getting that better job or getting better grades. The fact that I had to compete with some of the best minds of our country at IIM Ahmedabad was certainly intimidating, but that also helped me raise my game. My dream of becoming an investment banker bore fruit when I was offered a job in placements. Corporate world is a place full of intensity 
and no one is going to give you a free pass for being a disabled i somehow felt more concerned because of my disability to overperform because i thought that i did not want people to think when i underperform that well that's what you get when you hire a disabled person while success of disabled person is celebrated and used as motivation our failures will be stereotyped to our disability my journey in the bank started on a very positive note when i was awarded for displaying never settle value at our international induction program in shanghai so at that time do you know what i realized that the biggest blessing i have as a disabled person is to is that my stellar achievements are always going to be noticed and if you see my life it's like a jenga tower and all the things and inclusive environment and the anecdotes of inclusive environment that i have used are the pillars upon which i am standing tall you remove one piece and i might not be standing here today with the same confidence my dream is to live in a society where presence of people like me around you is so common that you don't find inspiration in sun in us anymore and my shout out to all the disabled people out there would be that we are anyways going to be the center of attraction so at least let's put on a good show at least thank you